Now comes the fun part. Let's design a bicycle. All right. Here we go again. Now, the assignment I have with this bicycle is I have a customer who's come to me who's not real tall. And if you're not real tall, you'll probably be interested in this. And if you are real tall, you should be interested too. Because even though this might not be the bike for you, you're still going to learn a lot just watching it what goes on. Now, my customer is having a problem just straddling the typical bike. She's been to a lot of bike shops and she is right on the top tube. So she's come to me and asked me to design a bike that she can stand over. So the first thing I want to do is to lower this top tube so that she can stand over it. So I look at my drawing here and I say, okay, well, let's put it down there. And we can come down here. We can come down here. We can come down pretty far. And then something starts to happen. As I come down more and more, I start to have a problem right in this area. I start to run into the down tube. And that's going to limit one of the one of the designs of this bike. So it looks like I'm going to have a bike for her that looks like this. We're going to get rid of all this stuff and we've got the top tube down now as far as we can get it. Just how far is that? Well, on a bike with a horizontal top tube like this, it's going to give me a seat tube that's about 20 inches or 50.8 centimeters. Now let's think about that. Most of my customers who ride 20 inch bikes or 50.8 centimeter bikes are about 5'4", typical height for an average woman. My customer is about 5'2", so this still may not work for her. That's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna to need to think about that. But I've got something else here that's starting to become an issue, and that is, one of the things she mentioned to me is, that she has a problem reaching the handlebars comfortably. When she's on a bicycle, she feels like she's really stretched out. The handlebars are in the next county. So she wants me to do something about that too, which brings me back to our old friend, the top two. Let's start a, a fresh piece of paper here and just see where are we right now with this design. I've got a bike that has a fairly short head tube on it because I can't go down any further there. I'm a little bit limited. Everything else is looking like this. And I know that I'm at about 50.8 here on the seat tube. So now I got to make the spike shorter this way so that she can reach the handlebars. Well, let's get the old faithful hacksaw out and start hacksawing away here. Really making the shorter is just like, kind of like the same thing as bringing the rear end a little bit closer, isn't it? So let's see, I can bring my rear end in here, I can bring it in here, I can bring it in here. I can really start to shorten this spike up quite a bit this way, except I'm starting to have a little bit of a problem now here at another end. You know, so I've got this spike pretty darn short this way. Let's just take a look at what's going on here. This bike has pedals on it. The problem is, as I start bringing the rear end closer to the front end, effectively shortening the top tube, moving everything this way, I'm also bringing the pedal closer to the front wheel. And what's going to happen is that on sharp turns, ouch, we're going to get contact between the pedal and the front wheel, overlap of the two. And that's not a particularly safe situation. It doesn't occur all that often. Most likely to occur when you're starting from a stop and you move the handlebars a little bit to get your bounce, or if you're making really, really sharp turns at slow speeds in a parking lot, that's when you can nick it, and it can bring you down for sure if you're not careful. So, let's see. Let's look at where I am. I've got this 50.8 centimeter C-tube on this bike right now, and it turns out, if I look at the dimensions of the wheel and the pedal and all that, I've got a top tube length of about 20 inches as well, about 50.8. Essentially, this is called a square bike. When the top tube and the seat tube are the same length, the bike design is considered to be square. So I still haven't done all that much for my customer here. 
Let me see, do I have any other options? Well, let's look at some more stuff. Let's get rid of this for a minute. And let's take a look at where we are right now. Let's see. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, here's this bike. Looks like this. Got wheels on it. We're at 50.8 centimeters here. We're at 50.8 here. So I start thinking to myself, first let's look at this. We need to make this even shorter. It's still not short enough for her. Right now, I've designed this bike with a C-tube angle of 72 degrees. What if I make it a little bit steeper? How about if I make it, say, 73 degrees? I just cut off that much top tube. How about if I make it 74? Ooh, I cut off a little bit more. You know, if I really wanted to be extreme and have a bike with a 90 degree top tube on it, I'd have a really short, short, or 90 degree seat angle. I have a very short top tube. So, I only want to go in terms of good design, though, to about 74 degrees. And that's going to shorten this up a little bit more, but not a whole lot, really, for this smaller woman. But here, I just told you one thing to watch out for. This is why seat angles of 75 degrees or more are a problem. You'll see them used frequently on smaller bikes. Look at the seat tube angle and look how steep it is. And the reason they're doing that is so that they can give the bike a shorter top tube. But what we found out earlier was that a steeper seat angle wasn't necessarily a good thing because biomechanically it can put the rider too far forward of the pedals and cause issues that way. So I'm going to limit my design to about 74 degrees. The other thing that I can do if I want to make this top tube lower so that she can straddle it is I can slope it. You're familiar with the traditional girl's frame? So let's see. Originally I started off about here. Have this, have this, and now I'm saying, why don't I just let that slope a little bit like this? That's going to buy a little bit of clearance right here. That does indeed help with the standover height. There's absolutely no doubt about that whatsoever. But here's one thing it doesn't help with, and that is the relationship of the saddle to the handlebars. Now, I'm sure you've all heard that on a road bike. Traditionally, you want the handlebars set up at about the same height as the saddle. That's, that's a pretty good height to have. Some people prefer their saddle higher. Some people prefer it lower. The problem with lowering this is that if this bike had a top tube that was horizontal, it would still be here. And that's, it's kind of difficult to explain, but you haven't changed anything up here. You haven't been able to lower this like you've lowered things down here. This is still here. So when this person gets the saddle adjusted to the right height for her pedals and all that, she might not be able to get the handlebars at the right height. She may end up, because she's a smaller rider with shorter legs, with the saddle way down here and the handlebars way up here, simply because they can't come down any further. So you've taken away some degrees of freedom in the design of the spike. You may have locked her in to a certain handlebar position. And I don't think that's a fair thing to do to a rider. I think that a rider should always have the flexibility in a bike design to have room on the saddle rails to move the saddles back and forth, to have room on the seat post to move the seat up and down, to go with shorter or longer stems to move the stem up and down. You should be not, the, not at the extreme of any of these ranges. Otherwise, you're up against a wall. Your style of riding a bike, your fit will change. You'll become older, you may become less flexible, you may become more flexible. You may become more aggressive on a bike, you may want to take it easier on a bike. The bike has to be able to change to fit you. And we're really starting to lock a person in on a design when we do things like not sloping the top tube to buy more standover height, steepening the seat tube to buy a shorter top tube. These start to become issues. So where does that leave the designer in terms of designing a bike that's going to work, that's not going to be compromised, that's going to take into account the needs of the rider? You have to wait until the next video to find out about that.